Brady can chuck it and score! Nice Shabbat curl and drives and scores! And the Senators win it. Five apart, Leonard Chan, Mavic and scores! Great Mavic and scores! Oh, and drops it! Green! Oh, Green again and scores! Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon and I'm your host. Now, before we get started, please follow me on Twitter at Sense Talk underscore and on Instagram at Sense Talk. Now, before we get into tonight's game recap between the Ottawa Sanders and the Edmonton Oilers, a few things. Firstly, the Belleville Sanders, they're starting their season very, very soon. In fact, in a few days, this Friday, the Belleville Sanders will start their first game against the Laval Rocket in Laval. Um, they only have they only have four games scheduled right now. Uh, because they're still up in the air about where they're going to play. Now, sources tell me the home ice, like I just said, is still up in the air. I asked if a bubble, like the NHL did with the playoffs last uh, season, is a possibility. Uh, my source told me it's not a possibility. However, there still is a good chance that Belleville Sanders will play in Ottawa, so stay tuned. There's still a very, very good chance, according to a very reliable source, that Belleville will play in Ottawa. Now, a couple of things. Firstly, go to SeatGeek.com and use the promo code SENSTOCK to save $20 off your first purchase. Uh, of course, if you can go to a game, most people can't. But if you can, that'd be great to use the code. You save money, I make some money. Everyone wins. As well, go to the go to the link in the description below to order your STST, the SENSTOCK shotgun tool. Uh, we sold out three times now. We just made a bunch more. Uh, we greatly appreciate the support. I love you guys so much. Everyone that's bought one, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you want to buy one, link in the description below. Now, tonight, the Ottawa Sanders took on the Edmonton Oilers. Miko Koskinen starts for the Edmonton Oilers tonight, and Marcus Hogberg starts for the Ottawa Sanders. We'll have plenty to talk about for Marcus Hogberg in a moment. But before we get to that, a few things. Let's get to the lineup. The game number 14 lineup is as follows. The first line was break a chuck with Chris Turney and Connor Brown. The Chuck Norris line has officially been broken up. And you know what? I understand it. That line hasn't been really generating any offense the last few games. Batherson has looked good. Norris has looked good. Brady Kachuk has looked good, but they're not really generating any offense. They're more, they're playing well defensively, I'd say, but they're not really scoring offensively. So, um, DJ Smith wants to try something new, and uh, let's let him try something new. Connor Brown has been flying, by the way, in that first period. The second line, Tim Stutzla, Josh Norris, Evgeny Dianov. I'm a huge fan of this line. Uh, you got Norris, who is, in my opinion, uh, a great center. Dadanov, who is a gifted goal scorer, and Stutzla is, you know, a superstar in the making. So I like that. And it's also good to see uh, Stutzla getting that top six opportunity. The third line, it is Nick Paul with Colin White and Austin Watson. You know, I'm a little bittersweet here. I'd like to see Colin White on the first line with Brown and uh, Kachuk. I think they would generate a lot of chances. Um, but hey, you know what? Uh, I think Wall and uh, White and Paul will look good together. Uh, but yeah, I, and he was flying in the first period too, Colin White, to be honest. Um, but I, I'd like to see him get some minutes uh, in the top six. The fourth line, Galchenyuk, Stepan, and Drake Batherson. Drake Batherson, that's a little questionable, but he needs to start getting going uh, offensively. You're not going to get him going offensively on the fourth line. Shabbat, Zaitsev, Riley, Zub, Willannon, Good Branson is your defensive pairings. Marcus Hogbrook starts tonight with Murray backing up. Paquette, Artem Isimov, and Josh Brown are the ones who are scratched. Injured, Eric Branson today, uh, injured, uh, undisclosed, but it looks like it was uh, off a... Uh, his first shift against the uh, Edmonton Oilers last night, Josh Archibald ran him into the boards behind the net. Uh, that looks to be the case of why he's injured. He should be out 7 to 10 days, which is a huge blow to the Sens blue line, but hopefully Brandy gets back sooner. Get well soon. Now let's get to the first period of play. We're 30 seconds in. Ottawa Sanders want to score. They want to send the message early. Connor Brown, the tip master, tips it home. Ottawa leads 1-0 on a Nikita Zaitsev shot. Brady Kachuk gets a secondary assist. The Sens lead 1-0. But five minutes later, Marcus Hogberg needs to stop this puck. A slap shot from the point goes in. And I don't even know how this went in. Marcus Hogberg was unscreened. No one in front of him. The puck wasn't even uh, tipped. And the puck was directly on the ice when the shot was in. And the weirdest part was, Hogberg was already down before the puck even arrived uh, in front of him. And it still beat him 5 full. Terrible goal. Inexcusable. You cannot have that happening in the NHL. 1-1. We move forward now where, after that, I even tweeted this out. Non uh, you know, I kind of regret tweeting it out now. But Marcus Hogberg responded after that uh, terrible goal with a couple of key stops. But with two minutes left in the period... You know, you're not going to win games when your goalie's allowing goals like this. 18 minutes in, Evan Bouchard from the point beats Hogberg on a goal that he needs to stop. It was similar to the dry saddle goal uh, last week where he was completely out of the net on that angle. Um, you know, he wasn't able to cover the angle. And that just happened again here. Hogberg needs to cover the angle. He's not. And, um, you know, well, let's get to the first period of thoughts. Uh, Hogberg, frankly, is not playing like a National Hockey League goaltender right now. I would send him to Belleville. 
um, to get some reps. Call up Joey Decord or put Philip Gustafson uh, as the backup goalie. Harkberg, this is not getting it done right now, and he's costing the Sanders precious minutes, uh, precious time, uh, because Ottawa, in that first period, played well, but Hogberg really killed their momentum. Now, as my friend Ethan Geist uh, pointed out before both goals, um, Marcus Hogberg, this is not a good goalie. Ethan called it out. Uh, I, I defended Marcus Hogberg, and um, I regret that. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, Marcus Hogberg was not good in that first period. Uh, he made some big stops. He also allowed goals that I probably could have stopped. So um, just inexcusable. And in the second period of play, I would like to see Matt Murray get a, get some minutes there because, um, you know what, this is, I don't know what you can do here. Uh, clearly, Marcus Hogberg is having some confidence issues. And, uh, you know, if, if I was the head coach, I would put Matt Murray in and then get Hogberg some minutes in Belleville to regain his confidence. But besides that, let's get to the second period of play and let's see what happens there. Um, well, that was an interesting second period of play. A game where Ottawa was playing well. A second period where Ottawa dominated. And yet the Sanders are down by two. Let's get to the second period of play. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a lot to talk about here. Primarily with the Sens backup goaltender Marcus Hogberg. We'll get to that in a second. Firstly, in the first intermission, Bruce Garriock Sens leading reporter mentioned a couple things that uh, are important. So I want to note them to you. Firstly, uh, Drake Batherson was potentially scratched uh, for tonight's game. He luckily was not. In fact, Drake Batherson has been incredible in this game. He's been really driving some offense. Uh, Senses can't buy the goal, but uh, Batherson's been good. Do not scratch him at all. Uh, secondly, Logan Brown, while he's not going to be traded, uh, there's definitely been interest around the league in him, uh, and there would be expected to be a lot of interest if made available for a trade. He, but I need to be clear, Bruce Garriak has not said that his, any trade is imminent. My sources tell me there's no trade imminent. And um, overall... Just get Logan Brown some minutes. Do not trade Logan Brown. This kid is going to be a very good NHL player. Now let's get to the second period of play. Oh wait, delay. There was a delay. The first second period of play was delayed by 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, the Zamboni leaked some like fluid or something on the ice. Burnt the ice actually. Um, but they fixed it. Ready to go for the second period of play. And Ottawa starts off. They get some good chances. But 4 minutes in. You know what? <clears throat> I'm just going to let this video. I'm just going to let this play video tell you what happened for itself. I'm going to let this video speak for itself, so I'll play it right now. Yep, that went in. Yep. 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 I'm going to get it on loop a few times. Yep, that goal. This is the National Hockey League, ladies and gentlemen. That goal went in. How? Your guess is as good as mine. Marcus Hogwarts, I don't know what is going on with you, buddy. Um, You know, I don't want to... I know you're human, obviously, and mistakes happen, but... Three goals. That is three goals where, frankly, I think many, pe many, if not all NHL goalies would have stopped those. Like, what are you doing on that goal? What are you doing, buddy? Um, the Oilers lead 3-1. to one. Matt Murray comes in. <sighs> I don't know what you're going to do there, but that is just a goal you cannot... That's a goal you see in Timbits hockey, like with Banton players, like with, ch with children. Not with professional hockey, hockey league players at the top level. You just don't see that. So, what does Ottawa do? Um, I don't think Hogberg will be be the backup goalie after tonight. Uh, after three goals like that, and after a terrible season so far, uh, with Gustafson being called up to the, the taxi squad, with Joey Decord being sent down to uh, Belleville because they're starting their season soon, uh, maybe we see Philip Gustafson in the next couple of games. We'll, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, Hogberg, I don't know what you got to do, but you got to get a... You need the reset, buddy. You got to reset. Now, my second period thoughts. Ottawa dominated the period. In fact, Ottawa, Matt Murray's first shot that he faced was the second shot of the game of the period for the Edmonton Oilers. Ottawa Sanders outshot the Oilers up until that point, 11-1. The one shot for the Oilers went to the back of the net on a goal that Marcus Hogberg could have stopped by just dropping down to his knees and not moving. But instead, he likes to move out of the way and letting the puck go in. Uh, but regardless, Oilers lead 3-1. Hopefully there's no delay at the beginning of the third period, and uh, we'll see you at the end of the game. This game was the definition of bittersweet uh, for the Ottawa Sanders. Back for the third period, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we discuss why it was bittersweet, let's get to the end of the game. So let's get to the beginning of the third period. We're two minutes in. Mike Riley, who's been very good the last few games, I can't lie. He has been very impressive, to say the least. A beautiful stretch pass finds Evgeny Dadanov, and Daddy's home sends it down by one. It's 3-2. to two. A beautiful goal there from Evgeny Dadanov, and Ottawa cuts the lead to a one-goal lead. It's 3-2. to two. 
and they continue the press. They're pressing, they're pressing, they're putting everything on net. Miko Koskinen is doing everything in his power to keep the Oilers in the game. The Sanders are utterly dominating. This may have been the best game the Sanders have played all season. And before we discuss the end of the game, I'll say this. While Ottawa lost this game, there's a lot of positives to take from, but there is one negative. They're not finishing. They need to be able they need to learn how to put the puck in the back of the net. I'm sorry. There has been multiple opportunities for Ottawa um, throughout the game where they missed. They missed opportunities, and you can't keep on missing grade A opportunities. Some of it's puck luck. They hit the post a few times too. Um, but um, you know, you just you gotta buy a goal. You gotta get a goal, and you gotta get it now because right now you're putting 42 shots on net. Uh, Edmonton's not exactly a goalie factory. Um, so listen, Koskinen had a good game, but. You got to put the puck in the net on a goalie like Koskinen, who has not been good at all this season. Uh, Sens lose 3 2. They've lost a lot of games this year. And, um, you know, I'll say this it's, there's a lot to be optimistic about. Like I said, and I'll say it again, the Sens have been much better the last few games. The, the team is producing offensive chances. Now it's time to produce uh, offensive goals. Get some goals in the back of the net, Ottawa. Um, you know, Ottawa probably would have won this game if it wasn't for Marcus Hogberg. I'll just flat out say it. Hogberg cost us the game uh, because we dominated. That's my third period thought. We dominated. We dominated throughout the game. We got 42 shots on net. And Hogberg allowed three goals that probably should not... No, not probably. Three goals that should never, ever, ever been allowed into the back of the net. It's frankly, it's disheartening because as a Sens fan, I'm so happy with the way we played. But it's the same BS every single night with with Marcus Hogwarts this, this season, and I don't. There's no easy fix. There's no easy fix. Uh, you you gotta send him to Belleville. You gotta you gotta get him to regroup. He needs to reset. You know, it's, he's just not playing well. End of story. He's been terrible this season. I don't know what happened to him. I I I sung praise. I was comfortable going into the season as him as a starter. I'm not afraid to say that. Now I don't even know if he's an NHL goalie. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. And. Uh, you know, Ottawa played very well, ladies and gentlemen. They very, very much played well. And, um, you know, um, if they just got some better goaltending early on in the game, we could be talking about a win right now. We could be seeing Brady, my puppy, you know, doing some cute things on the screen right now. But uh, instead, we're here sulking, sad, and talking about the positives and yet another loss. Now, let's get to the uh, stats from tonight's game. Ottawa dominated. They outshot the uh, the Oilers by 20, 42 to 22. Um, let's, let's break this down. The third period alone, Ottawa outshot them 16 to 7. The second period, Ottawa outshot them 14 to 3. Yet the final score is 3 to 2. Why? Because Hogbrick allows three goals that I could have stopped. Uh, faceoffs, 27 21 in favor of the Ottawa Sanders. Power plays. Ottawa is very, very disciplined tonight. I got to give them credit where credit is due. Ottawa only gave up one power play. Uh, they did not score on that power play. Yet, Ottawa also got two power plays. Uh, one of those being a four-minute uh, double minor. Uh, did not score on either of those. Uh, you know, The power play for Ottawa looks good. They're getting chances. Once again, they need to buy a goal. Um, but I would flip Stutzla and Batherson because Batherson's here and Stutzla's here and they're on the wrong side. If you flip them, they can both score one-timers. I think that would open up some more options for Shabbat, who's manning the point. Now, hits for 28-27 in favor of the Oilers, actually. Now, the Senstock star of the night, voted by you, the fans, is as follows. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the Twitter right now. It's a lot of notifications. I'll check that out after. All right. So, the Senstock star of the night, voted by you, the fans, is as follows. Yeah, we posted at 9.39. It's now 9.52, 13 minutes ago. Uh, 127 votes. Thank you for the support. Thank you for voting. Here's the Sense Talk Star of the Night voted by you, the fans. So, in fourth place with 10% of the vote, Drake Batherson. He didn't get on the score sheet tonight, and in fact, he almost was scratched tonight, uh, but I thought he had a really good game, driving a lot of offensive chances. He looked good. Third star with 9% of the vote, Colin White. Uh, you know what? I think he might be the number one center on the team right now. He is flying out there in the neutral zone. He's creating so many chances, and he you know, he just looks, he frankly looks dominant, and that's good. Second star, 15% of the vote, Thomas Shabbat. I think I counted six times in the game tonight where Thomas Shabbat made a beautiful deke or a beautiful move. He also set up a beautiful chances, and uh, he was manning the blue line perfectly with some defensive chances, uh, defensive stops, pardon me, as well. Um, in fact, he had a beautiful save on, I think, McDavid in the last uh, couple seconds uh, when the net was empty. Better five-hole stop than uh, Marcus Hogberg. Uh, I forget who. I think it was Brachensky on Twitter that put that out there. Credit to him. Funny joke. Now, the Sense Talk star of the night. What about you, the fans? 
This one's a nice one with 69% of the vote. It is Evgeny Dadanov. Back-to-back games with a goal for Daddy. And the Sens uh, are happy to hear that. Uh, somebody's finally contributing. It's good to see him. We're paying him $5 million a year to do it. So it's good to see. And he's notorious for scoring uh, goals in bunches. So expect uh, definitely a hot streak coming up for uh, Evgeny Dadanov. But besides that, the Sens lose 3-2. to two. We're back at it on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time versus the Winnipeg Jets. Let's see what we can do then. Besides that, thank you all for watching. Please comment below and let me know what you think. I look forward to responding and reading all the comments down below. Besides that, thank you for watching. Please follow us on Twitter at Sensetalk underscore and on Instagram at Sensetalk. Like this video, share this video with your cool stuff, and be sure to click the red button down there and subscribe to us. And most importantly, turn the notification bell on so you get notified whenever we upload a new video. Besides that, Ottawa loses once again 3-2. to Hopefully next game will have a better result. Besides that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Go Sensetalk.